Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2. I want to look at verse 8. Praise God. Colossians chapter 2, beginning at verse 8. Listen to what the apostle wrote to the saints in this Gentile city. He said, Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of this world, and not after Christ. Praise God. Father, we thank you in the name of the Lord Jesus for giving us this opportunity to break the bread of life. Father, open up our understanding that we might understand the scriptures and we give you praise. In Jesus' name, praise God. Hallelujah. Again, we are coming out of Colossians chapter 2 and verse 8, which says again, Beware. Lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. Now when the Apostle Paul is ministering to the saints in Colossians and he says to them, beware. And when Something or someone is telling you to beware. That means you are to be on high alert. Amen. Hello, somebody. Amen. You got to have your radar on. You got to have your antennas up. Because you must be on high alert. Amen. Praise, God. Praise God. Because we know that the devil desires to do to all of humanity what he did to Eve in the garden. Amen. Praise God. The Apostle Paul says it like this in 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse number 3. He said, but I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety so your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. And this is why he is charging the saints in Kalash to beware. We are to be on high alert. Amen. The Apostle Peter says it like this. In 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 8. He said, be sober. And that's very important that you understand the beginning of that verse. He said, be sober. Why do I need to be sober? Because I need to be able to reason. I need my mind to be clear so I can make the right judgment. Amen? Amen. Praise God. He said, be sober. Be vigilant, for your adversary the devil walketh about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Did it say that? Amen. Praise God. So we must be what? Sober. We must be vigilant. Praise God. Amen. We must be on high alert. Amen. Praise God. Is that what the text says? And because it's important that we be on high alert, praise God, that means we got to try every spirit. Amen? Amen. Did the apostle John bring this out? First John chapter 4, listen to the text, beginning in verse 1, he said, Beloved, believe not every spirit. Now do you understand why it's so important to be on high alert? It's very important that we as saints of God understand that. Amen. Amen. Because the enemy wants to beguile us from the simplicity that is in Christ. Praise God. A 
again he says in 1 John chapter 4 and verse 1 he said beloved believe not every spirit but try the spirits whether they are of God hello is that important do we have a, 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 a right to exercise this spiritual truth within our lives amen, amen. Because if you're going to keep yourself from being deceived, then you must try the spirits. Amen. And how we do that is by the word of God. How many know that the word of God is truth? Amen. Ain't that what Jesus said in his high priestly prayer? Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. And then the psalmist teaches us, in chapter 33 and verse 4, he said, the word of the Lord is right. So everything that's contrary to the word of God is wrong. Hello? Amen. Amen. Everything that disagrees with what is written in the Holy Scriptures is false. Come on. And this is why it's important that you believe not every spirit, but what? Try the spirit, whether they are of God. He said, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. Amen. I don't care how good they look, how sharp they dress. I don't care, praise God, how good they sound. He said, believe not every spirit, but try the spirit. Amen. Amen. Now, this is what the Apostle Paul was teaching the saints in Colossians. He said, beware, lest men spoil you through what? Philosophy and vain deceit. Yeah. After the traditions of, the, of men and the rudiments of this world and not after Christ. you got to become proactive in your walk with God. You got to become proactive. Amen? Amen. You got to become proactive. You can't sit on the bench and think that you're going to win. Amen. You got to become proactive. You got to get in the game. You got to get on the battlefield and fight. Amen. That you might survive. And come through with your hands lifted up in victory. Come on. Amen. Because nobody's getting into heaven without a battle. Amen. The apostle brings that out in the book of Acts, chapter 14, verse 22. He said, through much tribulation shall we enter the kingdom of God. How many know you're not going to skip into heaven without a struggles. You're going to go through hardships. Amen? Amen. Amen. You're going to have to contend for the faith Amen. which was once delivered unto the saints. Come on. Many say that they believe the word of God but then uh, they have no understanding that your faith is going to be tried. Hallelujah. Praise God. So the text again teaches us in Colossians chapter 2 and verse number 8. He said, beware lest you be spoiled through philosophy. Is that important to know? Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy. Amen? Now, it's a lot of that going on, right? Yeah. It's a lot of philosophy going on today. Praise God. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Many of you have heard people say, well, this is my truth. Or let her tell her truth. Come on. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, when people make statements like that, that's what you call a subjective truth. A subjective truth is when a person will tell you what their perspective.
perspective is and what their opinion is and how they feel about a thing, praise God, but it does, it's not based upon biblical truth. It's based upon their perspective, their opinion, their feelings. Hello, somebody. That's why you hear people say all the time, well, let, let me tell you my truth. Or let her tell her truth. Well, if this that's true for her, then you know that's truth for her. Hello, somebody. That's what you call a subjective truth. And a subjective truth, praise God, has no foundation in Scripture. A subjective truth is a lie. Come on. Because it's based upon man and his own philosophy. It's based upon man and his own opinion, his own feelings, and his own perspective. Come on. Hello, somebody. You'll hear people say, well, that's your religion. Come on. And the majority of the time when you hear that, that's people attacking the word of God. They're attacking the, the scriptures. Hello, somebody. Because they don't want to humble themselves and conform to their creator. Hello, somebody. So they will, you know, do their best to try to shun God. But how many know you can never shun God? Because you can't get away from him. Even if you reject Jesus Christ, his son whom he sent to be the savior of the world, you're still going to have to face him in the time that is to come. It's called the great white throne judgment. Come on. So you got to beware of this subjective truth that many people communicate today. Some say all truth is subjective. Praise God. That is a lie of the devil. All truth is not subjective. Praise God. In other words, truth is only true if, you know, I say what it is. Even if a certain thing is true, it's not true if I don't believe it. If I have an uh, objective opinion on it, then your truth, which you profess to come from Scripture, is not true. Truth is my opinion or my perspective on it. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. All truth is not subjective. It is a lie of the enemy. Hallelujah. And you got to watch that in these end times. So you got to beware of those people that talk about my truth or let her tell her truth. This is her truth. Praise God. Are you listening to me? Amen. Amen. And this is why the scripture teaches us in Colossians chapter 2 and verse number 8. He said, beware. So you have to be on what? High alert. Amen. He said, lest any man spoil you through philosophy. Amen. His own opinion. Uh -huh. His own perspective. Uh -huh. His own feelings about a thing. Regardless of what the Bible has to say about it. Hello, somebody. Are you listening to me? See, what we don't understand is that the Bible is objective truth. Hmm? Man's perspective, man's opinion, and man's feelings is a subjective truth. But the Bible, which is the word of God, is an objective truth. Because an objective truth is based upon fact. That can be proven to be true or false. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. Hello. Amen. Glory to God. Then you wonder why the Bible is attacked as much as it is. Because it goes against man's philosophy. It goes against his, uh, his opinion and his perspective. Which is contrary to the scriptures. Hello, somebody. Then you wonder why most of society is living in a matrix. Hmm? Amen. Praise God. Somebody said, what is a matrix? A matrix is a system built upon lies. And when people live, live by a lie, they are living in a world, a 
amen, where they are under a delusion. Amen. amen. Did you wonder why many are basically, amen, as messed up as they are? Yeah. They are living under a delusion. Amen. Amen. They're living in a system that has been built up on lies. Praise God. And then we wonder why the, the prophet Isaiah brings it out in chapter 5 where he says, Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil. They call bitter sweet and sweet bitter. Yeah. They call light darkness and darkness light. Right. That's the world we live in. Most people that you deal with on a day-to-day -day basis are living under a delusion. Praise God. They have been trapped in this metric system. Praise God. Are you listening to me? Amen. Amen. And their doctrine is my truth. Huh? Yeah. Their doctrine is my opinion and my perspective and, you know, they, they can care less what the Bible says. Amen. They cast the scriptures out as if it's dung. Come on, somebody. Amen. Praise God. Are you listening to it? Amen. Amen. That's what the text teaches us here. So it's important that we beware. Lest men spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. After the traditions of men and the rudiments of this world and not after Christ. Come on. Praise God. Look at the philosophies of men where they believe that mankind evolved. That eliminates having a creator. Come on. They don't have to deal with the creator of heaven and earth. They'll just say that man evolved. Glory to God. See, that's a subjective truth. Huh? That's their personal perspective, their personal opinion, and their personal feelings about a thing. Praise God. Which we know it is all a lie. Because Genesis chapter 1, the entire chapter, Teaches us how God created the heavens and the earth. Amen. Glory to God. Are you hearing me? Amen. Amen. There's a doctrine going around talking about the earth is flat. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Well, whether it's flat or if it wasn't, it had nothing to do with your soul being saved. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Amen. Well, guess what? The earth is flat, which is a subjective truth that many are propagating throughout the world. Praise God. Cannot be confirmed in scripture. Come on somebody. I had a, I had a guy one time, he, 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 he challenged me and he said the earth is flat. Then he, he read a scripture in, in Genesis chapter 1. I said brother, uh, that scripture is not testifying to your truth, your, your false ideology. Right. Amen. Amen. That, that's a subjective truth. That's your own personal perspective. That is you twisting the words of God to try to make it say what you want it to say. Amen. Amen. But the prophet Isaiah, chapter 40 and verse 22 says, your conscience. Amen? They eliminate the virgin birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, if you eliminate the virgin birth of our Lord Jesus Christ, you also eliminate the holy life that he lived while he walked the face of the earth. You also eliminate his crucifixion, the shedding of his blood on the cross at Calvary. You eliminate his resurrection sent you back in the glory and the pouring out of the Holy Ghost beginning on the day of Pentecost. Come on tonight. How many know that Christ is not your conscience? Amen. How many know God 
and these vain deceits. Amen. It's subjective truth. It's not really true, but it's their truth. It's truth to them. But their truth is not based upon facts. It's based upon their opinion. It's based upon their perspective. It's based upon their feelings. Come on tonight. And how many know that is what you call sinking sand? Glory to God. I need a rock to stand on. I can't stand on sinking sand because, amen, I will, amen, fall flat on my face. I can't survive. Amen. I can't last on sinking sand. You need a rock. Jesus is the rock. He's the rock of ages. He's the rock in the time of the storm. He's a rock in a weary land. Jesus Christ is the solid rock. Come on and show pop the rock in here. Praise God. Come on. Amen. He said, beware. Let's any man. Say any man. That's what he said. Any man. That's why you can't rule nobody out. Come on. Hallelujah. And see, in this day and hour in which we live, we don't follow this text of Scripture because we rule certain people out. Amen? Amen. We're not like the Bereans today. Even when the Apostle Paul ministered in Thessalonica, the Scripture says in Acts chapter 17, they searched the Scriptures to see if what he was declaring was so. Amen. Come on. Amen. Did you see that? Amen. You know why they did that? They wanted to try the spirit. They wanted to make sure that the apostle was preaching a objective truth. Right. Because objective truth is always factual. Yeah. It can be proved. Scripture, but subjective truth is based upon man's perspective, man's opinion, and man's feelings. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And this is why you got to have your radar on. You got to have your antennas up so that the serpent will not beguile you from the simplicity that is in Christ. If the enemy is going to keep from deceiving you, then that means we need to go back to the basics. If the enemy is going to keep from being successful in deceiving your mind, you got to go back to the basics. We can jump back a, a couple of verses. Let's look at verse 6. Colossians chapter 2 verse 6. He said, as you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. How many know that's the first step? Amen. That's the first step. Yes. Glory to God. You just can't run from that. That's the first step. As you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. Amen. And then he says, being rooted and built up in him and established in the faith. How many understand you got to get established in the faith? Amen. Like David said in Psalms 1, we must become like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Praise God. Come on. We got too many gullible people in the house of God. They are easily deceived. And this is why they have fallen for the okie doke. This is why their doctrine is flawed. Amen. And the things that they believe don't even stay in the Bible text. They are living in a matrix system. Praise God. They have a subjective truth that is based upon their personal perspective, their personal opinion, or their personal feelings. Praise God. And 
and they and the things that they believe is true is not even true because it has no foundation in the word of God. Come on, somebody. How many know that God created the heavens and the earth? Amen. The Big Bang Theory, evolution, is a lie. Christ is your conscience. That is a lie. How many know Jesus Christ was the manifested Son of God? He's not your conscience. He's the Son of the living God. Amen. Are you listening to me? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And then again, I know I mentioned this already, but how many know the earth is not flat? Glory to God. God says in the scripture by way of the prophet Isaiah and said God sits up on the circle of the earth. Praise God. Are you listening to me? Now there's a lot of things that we can bring out. We know that in the church you've heard of babies being sprinkled. How many know babies cannot be sprinkled? And when they sprinkle them, what are they doing? They christening the baby. They making the baby a, Christ, a Christian because they are sprinkling him with water. And there's no such thing. That is a false doctrine. You cannot sprinkle babies. Come on. You cannot sprinkle them. And let me tell you something. You can't sprinkle nobody. Hallelujah. And I know in, in various church organizations, they sprinkle their converts. Praise God. And there's no such thing as sprinkling to perform a baptism. Baptism is done one way and one way only. It's by immersion. The scripture says in Matthew chapter 3 verse 16 through 17 that when Jesus came to the river Jordan, John the Baptist took him under the water and then the scripture says how Jesus came up out of the water and the heavens opened. Praise God. And God spoke out from heaven and said, after the dove had descended upon him as lightning, this is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Praise God. Come on. Hallelujah. And this is why we got to get what? Grounded. We got to get rooted, built up, and established in the faith. And how many know that takes time? It takes dedication. Hello, somebody. It takes prayer. Amen. It takes you buckling down. Because a real student, they buckle down. And they learn to cram. You know why? Because if they don't pass the test, they got to get some knowledge. Get some understanding. Come on, somebody. Because there's a lot of people that say they believe the Bible. Well, guess what? So walk ye in him. So you got to be in him. You can't be outside of him. You can't just be talking about him. Come on now. You got to get in him. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Come on now. Praise God. Jesus Christ. Yahushua Hamashiach. He must come and live on the inside. Because now that he's in me, now in him. And now that I'm in him, the scripture says, now you gotta get rooted and built up in him. Come on, how many you know it's important to grow? It's important to grow up in him. You can be the same way. Amen. Been in the house of God for six months and a year. 
must be rooted and what? Built up in him. Hallelujah. How do I get built up in him? Well, let's look at a couple of verses of scripture. Let me show you the importance of this. Praise God. In the book of Acts, chapter 20. I want you to look at this because it's important that we get built up in him. Glory to God. Because we got to be able to resist the attack of the enemy. He's going to try to beguile us from the simplicity that is in Christ. And saints of God, we must become soldiers in the armed forces of the Almighty God. Come on, somebody. Come on. But also, you need to do this. 
Listen to what he says in Jude verse 20. He says, but ye be loving, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Come on. Hallelujah. And we know that praying in the Holy Ghost is praying in tongues. <laughs> Glory to God. Do you not know that when you pray in the Spirit, you begin to build up your spirit? Come on now. Are you listening to me? Oh, so we, want to, we want to rule this part out. We want to ignore this, but I'm coming to, I'm coming to tell you, you're not going to be able to be built up in him unless you hear and receive the work of his grace and pray in the spirit often, especially in these end times. Come on, somebody. Glory to God. Because I believe that when you obey God in this manner, this is how he's able to strengthen you with might in the inner man. Let's look at that. In Ephesians chapter 3, listen to what he says. He said, being rooted and built up in him. See, God's people need to be fortified. We need to be strengthened with Amen. might. Come on, didn't he say be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might? Well, guess what? We give you scriptures and we show you what God requires if you're going to be strong. verse 14 says, for this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ Amen. of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. Watch this. That he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend what all saints, what is the breadth, what is the length, what is the depth, and height, and to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. Hallelujah. Y'all want to go with me? Come on. Amen. Because I'm going to tell you something. When you first get the Holy Ghost, you only get it in a measure. Uh -huh. You only get it in a measure. Amen. Amen. You are filled with the Holy Ghost, but it only comes in a measure. Amen. Amen. You know why it only comes in a measure? Because there's more to get. Yeah. Huh? The Bible says to be what? Filled with all the fullness of God. Amen. 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 And we know, according to the Gospel of John chapter 3 that Jesus Christ, amen, had the spirit without measure. But when we get it, we get it in a measure. Praise God. And from that place, we must be grounded and settled and be built up in him that we may grow into a perfect man. That we might be filled with all the fullness of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Did you see what the apostle said? Amen. He said, beware lest you be spoiled. Amen. We got a lot of people in the house of God that have been spoiled. They've been spoiled. They've been poisoned. Praise God. Amen. They've been pampered. They've been patted on the head. They've been told a bunch of lies that they believe is true. But when you examine it according to scripture, you find out that they were beguiled by the serpent. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You understand? Amen. Amen. And this is why the scripture makes this statement. Again, he said in verse 7, 
in Colossians chapter 2, he said we must be rooted. How many know you, you got to take root? The truth of God must take root in your soul. It must take root in your heart. It, may take, it must take root in your spirit. Come on. If it doesn't take root, then you cannot be built up. Before a plant grows up, it first takes root. It germinates and the roots begin to sprout throughout the ground. Come on. Does that make sense? He said be rooted and built up in him. Then he said what? Established in the faith. Why is it important that we be established in the faith? Let me share this with you. Over in Ephesians chapter 4. I want you to look at this. This is why it's so important to be established in the faith. Ephesians chapter 4. Praise God. Listen to the text here. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to start here at verse 11. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11. He said, and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. Why? For the perfecting of the saints. For the work of the ministry. For the edifying of the body of Christ. Till we all come in the unity the oneness of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine. See that? Amen. This is why it's important to get established in the faith. And how many know there's only one faith? Amen. Ephesians 4 and 5 said there's one Lord, one faith, one baptism. You would think if people understood that if there is one Lord, then there will only be what? One faith. Come on. Amen. Praise God. He said there's one Lord, one faith, one baptism. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. But this is why he made the statement in Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 14. That we, henceforth, be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine. How many know there's a lot of different doctrines in the world? Amen. I mean, there's a slew of doctrines. The devil has many doctrines on the table. Hallelujah. He has many doctrines and most never examine whether what they believe is true or not. Amen. All they will ever give you is their subjective truth. Well, this is what I believe. Some people will even say, well, I'm not saying in the Bible, but, you know, this is just what I believe. Well, that's subjective. I'm not interested. The devil in you is a liar. Come on tonight. Because I could care less what your truth is, which contradicts the scriptures. Come on tonight. Amen. Are you listening to me? Glory to God. This is why Jesus came. He came to bring us the truth. The Apostle Paul said in Romans that Jesus Christ was a minister for the truth of God. Come on, somebody. What did he bring? He brought the truth. Matter of fact, he said, I am the way. I am the truth. Come on, somebody. And he said, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. It'll deliver you out of that matrix system. That system that has been built up on lies. That have the masses living in a delusion. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They think that what they believe is true. Yet it contradicts God's word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then you wonder why we living in a society like that. Where darkness has become light and light has become darkness. Right. Evil has become good and good has become evil. Anytime people try to justify their evil, 
Those are people that are in a delusion. Hmm? Amen. They'll tell you, well, I don't see nothing wrong with it. It can be as wrong as two left shoes. It can be contrary to the Holy Ghost. Come on. It can be sideways and way off in left field. And people will still believe those lies. Come on. And that's why the prophet Isaiah brought out in chapter 5. He said how they justified their wickedness for reward. Hmm? In other words, they call their wickedness right, and they call that which is righteous wicked. Come on. That's why in these last days, you're going to wonder why you're going to be hated of all nations for Jesus' name's sake. Because you and I are going to be looked at as the scum of the earth. We are going to be looked at as the haters. Come on. Because we won't get with the program. We won't jump on board with what everybody else is doing. And we won't go along with the rest of this ungodly world. Come on, somebody. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. That's just the truth. He said that we be henceforth no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slate of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. These are agents of Satan. The scripture says in 2 Corinthians chapter 13 how Satan's ministers have transformed themselves into the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their work. Hallelujah. But then the apostle goes on to say in verse 15 of Ephesians chapter 4, he said, but speaking the truth in love, that we may what? Grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and come by that which every joint supplied, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, make it increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Please understand Amen. what the scriptures is bringing forth tonight. He said in Colossians 2, beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. See the word philosophy, when you look at that word sophie in the word philosophy, the word sophie is wisdom mm -hmm. in the Greek. Praise God. Even in the Greek world they worshipped a man, a goddess named Sophia. She was she was veered as the goddess of wisdom. Amen. Amen. But she was nothing more but a demon. <laughs> Praise God. That's why the Bible talks about in the book of James the Apostle. It talks about earthly wisdom, sensual wisdom, devilish wisdom. But then it talks about the wisdom of God. That's why you got to be careful. You got a lot of folks walking around thinking they got wisdom, and many times they got that wisdom from the tree to make one wise in Genesis chapter 3. Come on, see, just like all money ain't good money, all wisdom ain't God's wisdom. Come on, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God, and he will give to every man. And see, the wisdom. sensual wisdom and it's not devilish wisdom. It's godly wisdom. It's a difference. Is that what he said? Well, let's read that. Praise God. Then I'll go back to Colossians. Look at it. In James chapter 3. Praise God. James chapter 3. Look at verse 13. He said, who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? 
Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descended not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. For where envy and strife is, there's confusion in every evil work. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, pure. then peaceable, Hallelujah. Uh -uh. Amen. gentle, and easy to be entreated, Amen. full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Amen. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. Praise God. Praise God. Did you see that? Yes. Glory to God. Amen. All wisdom ain't godly wisdom. Praise God. You got to be careful. You got to understand what you're doing because the devil is able to impart his wisdom. The world also has a wisdom. Praise God. Amen. That's why you have to be careful. Amen. That you don't operate out of the wisdom of this world. Amen. Come on. Amen. The, the text says in Colossians 2, Beware lest man spoil you through philosophy. See, that's man's wisdom. The wisdom of this world. Praise God. We can even incorporate whether it's an earthly, sensual, or devilish wisdom. You understand? Amen. That's why he said, beware. Yeah. We must be on what? High alert. Glory to God. Glory to God. And you know many today, they're not on high alert. Yeah. Come on. Did the apostle Paul bring this out? Amen. The apostle Peter told you to be on high alert. Didn't he in 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 8? He said, be sober and be what? Vigilant. Jesus told you to be on high alert. In Matthew 26 and 41, he said, watch unto prayer that you enter not into temptation. Glory to God. So we are commanded throughout scripture to be on high alert. Praise God. Because we are dealing with the eternal destination of your soul. Hallelujah. And you cannot comes from. All of this logic, you know, man's logic. You know, there are things that sound logical, but many things that sound logical are contrary to, bibli to, to biblical. Huh? Amen. There are things that can be logical, but it ain't biblical. Right. Right. It can right. sound right. right. That's why you got to try the spirit. That's why you got to weigh with the word of God because if not you will be deceived and if you allow the enemy to deceive you over here praise God then you give him a foothold into your life and then he'll begin to deceive you over here and for you know what you didn't gave him to that too and now you didn't gave him another foothold in your life and then he'll begin to deceive you over here and for you know it praise God you had Falling away from the faith. Amen. This is why you got to get rooted. And built up in here. And what? Established. Huh? Amen. Did it say that? Amen. Come on. I want to read that again. Glory to, Glory to God. Listen to what it says. In verse 6. As you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord. So what? Walk ye in him. Rooted. And built up in him and established in the faith as you have been taught. Amen. See that? Amen. See how important it is to be taught? Yeah. Now, these folks today, I don't need no preacher. Then you say God's word is a lie. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You say God's word is a lie. How can you hear? without a preacher. And the preacher must be what? 
God said. Yeah. Huh? And we got a lot of preachers today, don't we? Yeah. But the majority of them, God never sent them. Does God send someone to you to lie? And you know what? We, much of the time, we have been so deluded in the mind, we don't even know when we're being lied to. Because we just, get, we just got caught up in the, the sound good. Huh? All they got to do is sound good. Praise God. And you'll take your undergarments off and throw it at them. Come on. Ain't that what they've done at some of these secular concerts? Yeah. Some of these singers be up, up singing their secular music, play, amen, singing one of their slow jams, and you got women that will take off their undergarments and throw it up there. Yeah. Hallelujah. Well, this is how folks are in the church, too. They're the same way. Glory to God. Yeah. Amen. All they, all they got to do is sound good, and they thank them. Amen. At the preacher's feet. As if he is God. Come on. Did you hear what I said? Amen. All they got to do is what? Sound good. You don't believe that? Well, let's look at, let's look at that. In Romans chapter 16, verse 17 and 18. Let's look at that, praise God. Romans chapter 16, verse 17 and verse 18. Praise God. The text says, now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause division. See that? What did he say? Mark them. Amen. And we know that false doctrine causes division in the house of God. You understand? Then it says, and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you have learned and avoid them. And we know the doctrine that they learned was the apostles' doctrine, which was the doctrine of Christ, which was the doctrine of God. Hello, tonight. Yeah. Amen. Now listen to verse 18. He said, For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly. And by good words and fair speeches, they deceive the heart of the sinner. Look at that. All they got to do is sound good. Is that what the text says? By good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. And there's a lot of preachers that can sound good. Hallelujah. You would think they was a violin or a saxophone. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. But the text says by good words. Yeah, they, they speak in some truth. But some truth has been diluted with false ideologies, philosophies, vain deceit, come on, the traditions of me and the rudiments of this world. Come on, he said, with good words and fair speeches. Oh, they sound so good. Praise God. They're giving me the chills. They're making my bones shake. Come on, somebody. Glory to God. But what happens? He said they deceive the heart of the serpent. You know why? Because they was preaching a false doctrine that sounded like the truth. But because you didn't try the spirit, because you wasn't a Berean, and you didn't see if those things were so high by searching the scriptures, you were deceived. The serpent was able to see.
Praise God. That's just how it is. That's just how it is. We were warned. We were forewarned. There's no excuse. When you see those things happening, Jesus said, don't marvel, for I have foretold you these things. It should be even more for you when you see these things happening, because you are already forewarned. Jesus prophesied. His apostles prophesied. The prophets of old declared these things. In Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2. In verse 8 he said, again, beware. Lest any man spoil you through philosophy. Some people say you don't have to be baptized in water. <sighs> Praise God. Is that what the apostle, did the apostle Paul Give us a, uh, the Apostle Peter, rather, give us a commandment. Huh? Yeah. The scripture says, when the Gentiles received the Holy Ghost and began to speak in tongues and magnify God, Peter said, can these forbid water who have received the Holy Ghost just as well as we? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Amen. Is that what he said in Acts chapter 10, verse 44 through 48? And then 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 1 and 2 said, I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance that you remember the words that were spoken by the prophets and of us, the apostles, the commandments that we gave by our Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. See that? Amen. Some people say you don't have to speak in tongues to have the Holy Ghost. <laughs> that ain't what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 16. He said, if these signs shall follow them that believe. Somebody said, well, I never spoke because you haven't believed yet. Come on. Amen. You haven't believed yet. That's why you have not experienced the Holy Ghost, which is the supernatural experience that puts you into the body of Christ. According to 1 Corinthians 12 and verse 13. So you gotta, you gotta watch these lives. Because you gotta be folks today talking about I'm saved and I got saved. And they ain't even received the Holy Ghost. Your doctrine is flawed. Hello, you've been lied to. You was preached philosophy. You wasn't preached the gospel of Jesus Christ. You come out that preached to you vain deceit, not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. They preached to you the traditions of men, not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ.
many in the house of God in this last day is spoiled. Huh? Amen. They are spoiled and rotten. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They're spoiled. Hmm? They've been poisoned. Hmm? They've been poisoned with lies. They come to a place where they think that what they believe is right. And God's word is wrong, and yet at the same time, they will say they believe the word of God. Exactly. Even though the things that they believe contradict what is written. They've been spoiled. They've been poisoned. Hmm, their spirit has been poisoned. That's why they can't walk in truth. Think of what the apostle John said in 2 John. He said, I rejoice that to hear that my children walk in truth. But Jeremiah the prophet says in chapter 23, how they walk in lies. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can't walk in the Holy Ghost and, and walk in lies. When you walk in the Holy Ghost, he's going to guide you into all truth. Hmm? He said, beware. There's who? Any man. Hello? Amen. Every preacher got to be tried. Amen. Come on. Amen. And this is, this is why people are the way they are today. You ever see those people? They can't believe certain things in the Bible unless a certain preacher preach it. That's right. mm -hmm. Unless they hear a certain preacher preach it, oh, it's true now. They could have they been hearing the truth. You can show them chapter and verse. You can give them precept upon precept. You can break it down and give them understanding and they won't believe it. But they can hear another preacher who ain't broke it down, who ain't gave them precept upon precept, ain't gave them line upon line, ain't gave them no understanding or nothing. All they just said, well, yeah, that's true. And then they believe it. Anytime you see people like that in the church, those are people that have stooped low and they are worshiping that preacher in their heart. Yes. It doesn't make a difference what they say. Of course they're going to tell you, I ain't worshiping no preacher. Well, actually you are. Because it's hideous for one who can't even believe the validity of scripture unless a certain preacher says it. Now they believe it. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Huh? Amen. Praise God. That same preacher, praise God, can preach a lie. He can teach some false doctrine and they'll still believe it because they have all of their confidence in that man. Idolatry. It's idolatry. You're not going to worship the preacher. And many are doing that, even though people will say, I ain't doing that. It doesn't make a difference what you say. You can't even believe the word of God. You can't even believe what is written. You can come to the spirit of truth, tabernacle, and won't even believe it. But if you hear somebody else preach it, oh, it's true. Praise God. That is an idol worshiper. Look at the proof. <laughs> but the proof is in the book. 
Somebody say the proof is in the pudding. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. Hallelujah. I'm trying to help somebody. He said, beware. Lest any man spoil you through what? Philosophy. That's the wisdom of this world. Whether it's earthly, sensual, or deadless wisdom. That's the wisdom of this world. Amen. Then he said, and vain deceit. Look at that. Mm -hmm. A lot of vain deceit out here, ain't it? Oh, yeah. huh? a, woman can, a woman can put weave in her hair, long eyelashes, makeup on her face. Do you not know that's vanity? Don't you know that's deceit? Because that ain't her. Huh? Amen. Wait, watch, watch you take it off. See, that was never her. Praise God. She is a deceiver because she's appearing to be something that she's not. Glory to God. Are you hearing me? Now, we can go wide on this particular one right here. Praise God. But you see a lot of that today, even within many of these so-called Christian churches. Glory to God. You understand? Got these folk walking around looking like they some European woman. When God made you black, when he made you brown, glory to God, when he made you with kinky hair, y'all getting quiet. Hallelujah. But you want to be a European woman because in your mind, the standard of beauty is the European women. So you want to look like them. So I ain't trying to look like them. You got on their stuff. Hello, somebody. You don't like this tonight. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. That's just the truth here. Amen. Amen. Vain deceit. A lot of vain deceit. We can go wide on this one right here. But for the sake of time, we're going to cut and paste. Then the text says, and after the traditions of men. How many know there are a lot of man-made traditions? Amen. And you know what people will do? They will take God's word and cast it to the side to keep their man-made traditions. Huh? Is that what Jesus said in the Gospel of Mark chapter 7? Look at this, praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Listen to this. Beginning in verse 6. The Gospel of Mark chapter 7 in verse 6, it, the, the text says, He answered and said unto them, Well has Isaiah prophesied of you, hypocrites, as it is written, this people honored me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. That's many within the house of God today. They say one thing with their mouths, but their hearts is in a different, another place. Because the things that they are doing ain't matching up with what's coming out their mouth as far as when they say they're, they're praising God. Come on, somebody. Amen. Then he says in verse 7, How be it in vain do they worship me? See, it's a lot of vain worship. It's a lot of false worship going on in the house of God. Not only in the house of God, but follow people to their homes. Watch how they live. And they will show you that they are not a true worshiper. Praise God. The text says, How be it in vain do they worship me? Teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. For laying aside the commandment of God, you hold to the traditions of men. As the washing of pots and cups and many other such like things you do. And he said unto them, fool, well, you reject the commandment of God that you may keep your own tradition. Look at that. Men made traditions. Babylonian customs. They don't even glorify God. But we will throw God's word to the side. We will flush his commandments down the, down the toilet soon so that we can fulfill the lust of our flesh and indulge in our man-made commandments. Hello, somebody. Our man-made tradition that do not now don't do anything but glorify Satan and gratify this old man called the flesh. 
right. You better hear me. Because your mouth can say one thing, but you do another. Amen. And we do that every day, don't we, y'all? Don't let me bring out a lot of these commandments. Because God got some commandments in here, folks, that many people are breaking throughout Christendom. Amen. Hello, somebody. Amen. I mean, some of the most simplest commandments, right. like wives obey your husbands. Right. And they can't do that. Amen. Hmm? Amen. You're not a worshiper of God. You're a lawbreaker. Come on. Husbands won't provide and protect their wives. Huh? Amen. The Bible says if a man does not provide for his own house, he's worse than an infidel. Amen. Come on. Amen. Amen. We're not talking about the government providing for your home. Hmm? Uh, come on. Amen. Come on. I'm talking to the men now. Amen. Hallelujah. Y'all want to hear this? Amen. Then we'll, then, then we'll see just how much faith we have in God. Yeah. So we, we talk a lot of we talk a lot of stuff, but then when it comes down to the nitty gritty, when your back is against the wall, you find out you don't have faith in God. Right. Come on. Sometimes you can get so accustomed to the system. Right. Amen. You have no idea you're in the matrix, Amen. <laughs> and you don't even know it. Amen. You've been lured back into the enemy's bosom. Now you have become trapped in his system. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We don't trust God because we depended upon the system. Huh? Amen. And in the day depend on the system that they have always depended on. And you have to give in to those criteria to continue to live on the system which is bending you in in this end time hour. You better hear me. The scripture says beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and fantasy after the traditions of men after the rudiments of the world. Amen. How many know we can't love the world? Amen. We gotta separate ourselves from Amen. the world. Amen. Huh? Amen. We can't be world. 